Howdy folks, how are we all doing today? Uh, all the usual stuff out of the way first. Thank you very much for tuning in. It really is appreciated. If it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It's interactions like that that help this channel stay well up in the YouTube rankings. And just as, if not more importantly, it's customers, not just visitors to our website, our optics weekend, over the phone, etc. that help this channel keep going and I can keep adding new content as I've done today. So in a previous video I had a look at the Skywatcher Capricorn 70 EQ1. This is the Skywatcher Evo Star 90 EQ2. So it's one model up. It's got the same 900mm focal length as the Capricorn but obviously that slight, like, slightly larger 90mm objective and the EQ2 mount. Uh, you may, excuse me, notice there on the mount it looks like that isn't quite wide enough but that's okay because it uses the same legs as the Skywatcher AZ3. It is an EQ2 mount, it's not an EQ3 or a HEQ5 and so there will be a little bit of shake there every time you adjust the focus so be aware of that, be, be patient but uh, astronomy it's not something you rush anyway is it that you're out all night so with this one I'll just show you first and uh, this is quite a large telescope so apologies if uh, light fittings and other things come into view while I'm moving it around so You'll have to excuse me being in the shop for a while, but I'll just have to show you how ridiculously easy it is to move this telescope. And what you'll see me do first is just slacken off two little uh, nuts, uh, handles that uh, that help keep it in place. I'll just up the brightness a bit, there we go, and show you how easy it is to move around. So here and here, these two nuts here, you can slacken those off. And I've got it nicely balanced, so wherever I wherever I leave it, it stays there, wherever I move it to. And look at that, how easy. That, that's effortless. And so what you do, is you find what, using the finder scope, centre whatever you're looking at, tighten that up, you don't have to over tighten it, and then you have your slow motion controls for your fine adjustment. And thankfully it stayed in view while I was doing that. That's good. True professional. So, with this, uh, I'll mention the finder scope, it's a 6x30 inverted image one, but you can upgrade that to a red dot finder, or a 6x30, or a 9x50 erect image or non-erect image finder scope down the line. It comes with the usual modified achromatic Skywatcher le uh, len uh, eyepieces sorry, of 25 and 10 millimeters but also comes with a, a two times Barlow, but it's the deluxe version, the doublet, so it's much better quality than some of the budget scopes. With the 25 times you get 36 and 72 times with the Barlow, and with the 10 millimeter 90 all the way up to 180, which I'll come on to, well, straight away. Because the first thing I looked at with this was, I, I stuck one of my Bar Barda planetarium solar filters on, I thought well, I'll do some white light observing of the sun. Excuse me. And the view I got with this telescope using the 25mm was astonishing. It, it was near, it, not quite up there with my TAL 100mm refractor, but that's a different beast altogether. But the, the detail in the, the sunspots and surrounding areas was astonishing at just 36 magnification. It was all in the same field of view. I've, I've, I, I didn't try it with the Barlow, but I did try I put in the 10mm where the image instantly went a little bit soft and I, I know that a number of you have your quite strong views about the standard 10mm Skywatcher eyepiece you, you get with it, many of their scopes. So certainly down the line look at maybe upgrading the 10mm but the 25mm, it, 36 times magnification just shows you you don't need high magnification for detailed solar observation and uh, with, with this one what you can do and the diagonal by the way it's a 90 degrees uh, erect image but it, the left and right are opposite and what you can do is you can remove it 
Excuse that. Just the um, just reminding you not to look at the sun without a, a uh, solar filter. There you have a T-thread, so you can put on a, a T-ring for DSLR photography. And just uh, like a, a lot of the other Skywatcher refractors, maybe just see it, I don't know, there's a little screw here where you can slacken off the tension for the, for the focus. So that was the, the sun out of the way, but uh, last night I had a quick look at the night sky with, with this telescope and uh, it was horrendous seeing conditions, it was very misty, it was, cloudy so everything I was looking at was through clouds so yeah I saw Jupiter and two of its moons the other two must have been hiding around the back and uh, for those of you who know the date of this video it would have been last night so you can look it up to see whereabouts they were the cloud belts easily visible but it was awful seeing conditions but very nice contrast image and Saturn very clearly showed the rings I couldn't see the moons around it but that was because I was looking through cloud but there was a space in the cloud in the Aquilia area and those of you who know that area know that it's a really rich field area for lots of stars and I looked at uh, uh, Altair I believe it is in Aquila, Aquilia and the contrast of the stars was absolutely superb so I would imagine this telescope for looking at rich field star clusters, open clusters things like that, the double cluster in Perseus with this 25mm eyepiece it will be absolutely fantastic so don't just think it's for the moon, the planets and the sun it's also great for looking at Richfield uh, star clusters as well excuse the light coming into the background but it is quite a large telescope so I can't uh, get rid of everything in the house including myself so it comes, I mentioned with an EQ2 mount, you can actually, if you want, get a dovetail bar and put it on a, an EQ3 mount. And uh, I've not mentioned my favourite subject with telescopes. This is going to be absolutely fantastic for looking at double stars, triple stars or, or more. And um, whether they be actual double stars, double stars or line of sight uh, double stars, but it would be absolutely fantastic for those. And... I would like to think that once you get looking at double stars you'll be hooked because there are so many to look at. So I believe this is a multi-coated optics and when I took it out of the box first thing I noticed is the photograph on the website of Optical Vision and their catalogue does not do this scope justice. It really is a solid piece of kit and uh, you'll get many many uh, years of use out of this for both visual and photographic. You can upgrade it uh, with a with a simple motor drive or, or, or and there are other options as well, dual access ones. So yeah that's a quick look at the Skywatch Evo Star 90 EQ2. Really nice sort of intermediate, it's not a, a beginner's telescope that you're looking in like 100, 150 pound. This is just over like 200 to 250 pound range or also the retail price is actually above that. But um, yeah, uh, everything you wanted to use in the box and uh, very easy to set up, very easy to use. I found what I was looking for last night, the planets, without even using the finder scope. So how easy is that? So as always, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.